Hey guys, John Canford here, JJ DJ Entertainment. So with Chave Show Express, there's something I have been doing with it. And for the longest time, I have been doing my my live program, specifically the moving um, head fixtures and or scanners. I've been doing them very, very difficultly. Um, meaning I would have one scene made, which let's say maybe a circle sweep. And the lights will be blue. Then I have another one with the same circle sweep, and the lights will be white. Then I do another one with the same circle sweep, and this may just be strobing. And I would I would literally have ten to fifteen different scenes for the same circle sweep. And when I made another pattern, I would have another ten to fifteen scenes. So I would have this this huge collection of um, uh, scenes that we would use that we really don't need. And I'm going to show you guys um, what to do to um, correct this and um, make your shows a little bit more versatile um, with layering and Show Express. So this is just a default show. There really isn't, I don't think anything, well, maybe there's a few things in the show. Um, let's go ahead and we're just going to add in um, a couple quick fixtures. If you do not know how to do this, please go back and watch one of my other videos. Um, let's see. Since we have, I have four Q spots. I'm just going to add four Q spots in here real quick. So we'll call it Q spot one, Q spot two, three, and four. Okay. So we know obviously we have to go set our fixtures: 36, 50, 64, and 78. Um, let's go ahead and go to the, um, the editor mode. Um, something that I, I like to do now as we get into having more fixtures is creating groups for fixtures so we can, um, grab them on the fly instead of having to go in and click each one or, you know, highlight and select which ones. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to put all my QSpot 260s in one group. So I'm going to highlight them all, right click, add new group. And we'll call this Q spot 260 all. Okay. Another thing I will do is let's say these are the four movers that are on a single stretch of truss over top of the dance floor. Okay. I will grab, you know, the left side. Because normally we have two on we have two on the left side, we have a disco ball in the middle, and two on the right side. So I'll grab the two on the left, I'll add them to another group, and we'll call this um, two spot 260 left two. And then we'll grab these two. And we'll call these Q spot 260 right. Too. And then I mean, you can do these in any different ways. I mean, you can grab the first one and the third one and, and make that a group, and then the second and fourth. Um, if you have more than, you know, let's say you have eight of them, you grab all the even numbers. So the first one, or sorry, if you grab all odd numbers, so one, three, five, uh, seven. Um, so these are nice because then on the fly, I hit A and I it'll automatically select all. B will select the two on the um, left. And C will select the two on the right. And when you have them all select, you know obviously when you when you make a fader go to one, it adjusts all four of them at the same time, or however many you had selected. So let me go ahead and right click and disable this channel. Okay. So what we need to do first is we need to um, make a couple movement macros. So let me go ahead and open up 3D so maybe you guys can get a Get a visual of what we're what we're trying to accomplish here. Um, now again, the let's see, we have all four movers. No, we do not. Okay, so I guess we're gonna troubleshoot this real quick. Figure out why all four of the movers aren't showing up in 3D. So give me a second. Huh, I'm not sure why they're not in there. Let me see. Make this 
the screen a little bit smaller here. So then we turn on 3D up here. We turn on lamps. Oh, I bet you they're all there. I can see the four beams. They're just, they just need to be split up a little bit more. Okay, so we're going to scratch 3D because I don't really want to waste 40 minutes setting up a 3D rendering and all that. So let's just go ahead and go straight into the generator. We are going to just make some very general um, uh, sweeps. And it's very important that all these channels are ghosted or dis are, are disabled is another term for it. And what I mean by that is that let's say I select this channel, move it. Now you see how this channel is now dark. It is now active. Even if I take it back down to zero, it is still an active channel because it is, it's been selected. So you need to ghost it or disable it by right clicking on it. And clicking disable channel that puts it back to uh, a non-selected channel so you can layer stuff accordingly so let's go ahead and go and make a couple quick generator scenes so select our pan and tilt um, this will be, just be a circle scene just for the heck of it I'm just gonna go ahead and fan it a little bit and we're gonna click generate here I'm not going to save this, so it's automatically going to put it into the editor. We're going to save this file. I always, I always keep my stuff in folders. That's I try to be as organized as I can. So QSpot 260s. I'll make another folder in here. Call this movements. Okay. Create. We'll just call this circle movement. Okay. Go ahead, create a new scene. We'll make sure all the Q spots are selected again. Now, there's a lot of built-in patterns that Show Express offers. Um, we're just going to grab one. We'll use the crown. Go ahead again, export this scene. We're going to save this. Q spot 260 movement. We'll call this the crown movement. Now again, once if you guys are, are familiar with using generator, you know depending on how you have the movers set up, the rooms and everything, you may have to adjust your generator points accordingly. So, but since this is just for demonstration purpose, I'm not really overly concerned about where those are. Um, so again, we're gonna make another one. We're gonna do three three movement macros to um, to say. Let's grab another one. Let's go with a figure eight again. And then hit save. Movement, we'll call this figure eight movement. Okay. So we can go ahead and close out the generator. We don't need this anymore. Go ahead and clean that file out. Now, now we're going to work on individual colors. So let's say out of those, those are my three movements. Now I want to add in my standard color. So we can go ahead and add in a red. Set them all to red. Again, we need to, this is where you need to be careful. You need to make sure all your X, Y values are left alone. They're, they're not turned on. Because if you turn them on, it's going to, it's going to get funky with, um, with when you start layering stuff. So we're going to turn the red gobo on, our red um, color on. And we're going to go ahead and turn the LED on and open up the uh, the shutter or the dimmer for um, for uh, uh, LED lights so we're gonna right now our lights would be red we're gonna go ahead and save this as a color macro so we're gonna make another folder called colors and red now the advantage of doing this is whenever you no matter what movement macro you guys have going on, you can click these colors and it'll automatically turn on the red LED for that particular movement. And it'll all come full circle at the end. So just kind of bear with me for a second. Let's go ahead and name this one blue. 
And let's just do green and we'll do white as well. White. And save as white. Okay. So now we have we have our three color, our, our three movement macros. We had our circle, we have the crown, we have the figure eight, and we just made four color macros, red, green, blue, and white. Um, and you guys can also get fancy with this. You know, you can make this one white, this one blue, this one green maybe, and that one yellow, whatever you want to do. Whatever color combos you guys, once you start figuring, seeing what we're talking about, you guys can get as crazy as you want. So, okay, we have our movements, we have our colors. Let's go ahead and disable the color channel. And then we're going to go ahead and, and turn on the strobe feature. So now this will make the lights strobe. So we're going to go ahead and just save this also. I'll save this in here called strobe. And let's go ahead. We'll go ahead and make one for um for Gobos too while we're doing this. So let's make sure we have them all selected. Let's make sure all the channels are ghosted again. And let's go ahead and just select, we'll just do two Gobos. There's Gobo 1, which is a pink wheel with white dots. And uh, you, you tend to run with, uh, depending on what type of computer you're using, whether it's a 13-inch MacBook or a 17-inch PC, um, I try to abbreviate the, the file names as much as possible. So if you get green, blue, and orange, it's going to take up a lot of space. And when you have it in a live window, you may not have that much space on your button. So you kind of just want to abbreviate where you can. So we're going to save this one. And... Let's go ahead and add one more Gobo in here. Go with this guy. Um, this one to me looks like a deck of cards that are fans, so I'll just name it Deck of Cards. Okay, so we have our movements, we have our colors, we have a nice little strobe option there as well, and we have a um, couple Gobos. So with that done, let's go ahead and just close it out. Let me close this guy out too. Let's go to our live. So we're going to set up our pages on live. And this is where this all comes full circle for you guys. We're going to add light scenes. Let's go ahead and add the movements in. And I add them in separately because when I do them separately, it automatically puts them in their own columns. Versus if I just added them all together, I'd get one column that was you know 16 long. Or however many we did. So we got our three movements. Let's add in some more. Let's go into our colors next. Let's go ahead and add in our gobos. And Go ahead and add in our strobe as well. Now the strobe, you know, depending on what fixture it is, sometimes I just throw them in with the colors. Sometimes I make it a a standalone button like it is here. So okay. Now the first column we have our movements, we got our colors, we got a, you know two gobos, and we have our strobe feature. The one thing I always do is I make our strobes a flash button, meaning as soon as I click it and I let go of it, it's not going to stay checked. So it's just going to strobe as long as I hold that down. Another thing I also do is I always make our strobes a keyboard um, command. So we're going to go to button trigger. We're going to go to keyboard and we're going to make the S key the strobe. So now every time I press the S key on my keyboard, it's going to start, it's going to strobe the fixtures. And this is where I kind of wish I would have took the time to set up 3D because it's going to give you a better visual of what's going on here. Um, 
can move this down. Okay, so let's turn on 3D, and you should see our circle movements, which is actually all four of the lights in there moving. But so we have our circle moving. Let's say we want to make this blue. So we're gonna hit blue. Now we got our blue movement. Let's say we want red. We got red. You want green? We have green. And we can easily just go ahead and change up the movements to, you know, whatever whatever we want it to be. Um, so we want to go ahead and give it a. Let's see, we'll put it to white. We're gonna turn on this design. There you go. Now you have the design as well. And it's nice because now you can, you know, add on new scenes. And you don't have to recreate all the colors for the scenes. You don't have to create, you know, new gobos for the movements. You just have everything you, you need pretty much here. So you can create a whole page of movements and, you know, you have your predetermined colors. Let's say, you know, one thing we always do is we do blue and pink together with our movers. And it, it's, it takes up. You know, if, if I was to do this the old way, I'm trying to think of good ways to explain this to you guys. If I was to do this the old way, for the circle movement, I would have four colors here. For the crown movement, I'd have now eight eight buttons. And, you know, figure eight, you know, tack on another four, so now we have, you know, do quick math, um, 12. So I would have 12 buttons that would, you know, take up all this space I don't need anymore. I just, it's, it's a lot simpler. And then if you throw in, you know, Gobos on top of it, it you know it quadruples the amount of buttons you would have. So it just it's a very nice way to you know be be more versatile with your setups. Um, so another little you know quick trick that we do as well is I'll go ahead and, and I'll make these buttons the actual colors, um, just so I you know when you're working on stuff in the fly. You can find what you need to do a lot faster if um if it's darker or if you're you know have 30 things going on you can just grab your colors by just you know visually visually seeing what you're working with. Um, another nice feature is the pause and play. So let's say I want to go from white and I'm going to go to from white to let's say blue. Um, and I want to turn off the go on the process. So we have our current scene selecting our selected. We're going to hit pause and play. We we we'll think in advance what we're going to want to do. We want to turn off the white, we want to turn on the red, and we want to turn off the go for this particular scene. And then you um, think it's what's a shortcut? Control, shift space. So hit shift space, boom, takes. All back what goes into the, the pause, the, the next step you kind of made. And then we'll figure eight. Shift space and goes to figure eight. So hopefully this this helps you guys. Um, I know this has been uh, great for us. I just need to take the time to actually go in and reprogram all of our scenes for this. Um, you know we have probably seven to eight different um, profiles that we'll use depending on what the event is, what the rig is. So it's it's not like I have to go in and change one. We're talking probably about a good good weekend or a good week to just you know take my time, program everything exactly the way I want it. Um, but it definitely in, in the long run is worthwhile and definitely can speed up your setup or not say your um your creation of shows and new new movements and everything. So hopefully this helps you guys. If you have any questions, leave your comments below. Make sure you check out the Facebook group. Uh, we have a Show Express Facebook group. There's a lot of good guys in there that handle, um, that work with um, Show Express that can help you guys out. Um, it's a keyword, uh, Chave, Show Express, and Lighting. Um, definitely join up there and see if um, you guys can get talking with everybody and hopefully, you know, create some new scenes. So if you guys have any questions, again, this is um, John Cannon for JJDJ. Make sure you guys um, practice and enjoy.